How's it going guys? I am here um, temporarily in Lexington, Kentucky. Um, just finished up the 2019 KBF National Championship down in Shreveport. It had just occurred to me, I've been on the water about 57 days this year and 54 of those have been chasing largemouth bass. Three of those have been dedicated to musky fishing. Now, for someone who whose first passion is musky fishing, that is not acceptable. Um, however, chasing the tournament bass scene has taken up so much of my time. I haven't been able to get out near as much as I want to and go after the one fish that I enjoy chasing more than anything. So I figure it's gonna be probably a few weeks until I can musky fish. So if I can't get on the water and go after them, at least I can get all you musky heads together and talk about them. So I thought I would take a little bit of time here um, while we're kind of in transit be between our two locations to talk about my favorite spring musky tactics and more importantly, the effective baits. Um, I've musky fished for over 10 years, six of those years in a kayak. And let me tell you, I've put a lot of big musky in my kayak um, and this time of year if you know what you're doing can be extremely effective and this is when you can get some numbers um, my best day i put six musky in the boat in march last year so this is the time all you musky addicts to get out there and put some serious numbers in your boat i'm going to tell you what i know what i've learned and share with you some of the baits that i find to be most effective this time of year Let's briefly just talk about spring musky and what we want to look at when we are thinking about targeting them this time of year. So we all know um, spring can be relative depending on where we're talking about in the United States. So let's just start with water temperature. We know that muskies tend to spawn anywhere from fifth, low 50s, upper 50s, 52, 62 degree water temperatures. Um, before the spawn, musky will be staging just outside of those secondary transition points leading up to their spawning grounds. A lot of the times with musky fishing, you'll catch me sun up to sundown out in the water going after them. But this is the one time of year where I don't feel so bad sleeping in a few hours because spring musky get more active as the water warms up. What I found is they tend to move up into those that shallow water in the early to mid afternoon and that's when they are most susceptible. Let's take a quick look at some of the areas I like to fish. Um, we're talking about our southern reservoirs, southern rivers this time of year. Get a quick idea of kind of what I look for in terms of what type of water I want to be placing myself at to find these fish. Right here in this frame alone there are two things that would catch my attention. Um, one, I really, really like where you have a smaller tributary dumping into a large river system. Those are usually always areas where muskies tend to congregate. Another thing I look for, muskies aren't really wanting to expend a ton of energy. So I always look for these really, really tight bends. You know you're going to have a lot of current ripping around this corner. Well, a lot of times these fish don't want to don't want to be hanging out in that fast current. What they will do is they will tuck in right here on the side in kind of the back eddies so they don't have to do much work. The forage will come to them. Uh, a lot of times, many of my fish in the spring, you know, March, April, even early May, will come in these areas where you have these real tight S turns just on the back side. You got a lot of current coming on this side. There's a lay down or a rock and they will be tucked right behind that, allowing the bait and the forage to come to them. And when we it comes to talking lakes, let's take it to the southern musky capital of the world, one of my favorite musky fisheries, Cave Run. So in the springtime, what I'm looking for here, obviously those fish have one thing in mind, and that is to spawn. So I like to look at these major creek arms. Um, this is a pretty popular one on Cave Run. You've got really, really tight depth contours right here along this bank, allowing those fish quick access to deep water. But they can also midday get up in this real shallow area that's got good, fresh emerging grass and that they can feed and stake out their spawning grounds. Other things I always look for, 
secondary staging points. Um, I really like this cut right here. You've got a lot of deep contours. You've got two kind of secondary points that come right way out, um, lead all the way back into again, another potential spawning flat for these fish. All of these secondary points are gonna hold bait and they're gonna hold musky. Again, we know musky prefer warmer water, both to feed and spawn this time of year. So targeting those big shallow flats that tend to warm up quickly, um, any areas with rock, rock piles, lay downs, vegetation, things that the sun will hit, warm up, attract bait, will attract musky. So there are a lot of very generic musky videos floating around out there when it comes to baits. So what I wanted to do was fine tune that and go over some some baits that you may not have heard of, you may have, but baits that I prefer to use this time of year over anything when chasing muskie. Let's start it off with the six inch Jake. Now, they make this bait in several sizes. The six inch, they have an eight, they have a 10. Um, when it comes to springtime, I will typically downsize all of my baits. Um, I don't want the offering to be too overwhelming for these fish, though they are feeding very heavily. They don't want to expend a ton of energy, and this is the, the type of forage that they are after this time of year. So I like the Jake. It's, it's your jerk bait. Um, it has holographic sides on it. This is my go-to bait when it is super sunny, clear day. Um, I'm fishing breaks. I'm fishing areas that you could hold suspended muskies over deep water. Um, a lot of times that surface water will be a little bit warmer and those fish will, even in the spring, suspend over that deep water. This bait will get that fish's attention. Um, by aggressively jerking this, it's gonna have a real, real tight, really aggressive type of wobble and these holographic sides will throw off a glare that those fish can see for a very long ways. Secondly, who could forget buker tails? smaller inlines. There's a lot of talk about those big blades and burning blades. However, those are very effective for me in the late fall, but this time of year, for some reason, I do so much better downsizing with these smaller inline spinners. Um, a lot of times you can see this one's been put through the ringer, caught a lot of fish for me. I'll add just a, a real small little twin tail grub, some type of plastic, and that gives it that almost lifelike appearance that those fish cannot resist. Not only is offering a smaller presentation better sometimes, but more importantly so, the speed of your retrieve in the spring can be huge. I promise you, you can burn these back so much faster than you can burn back eights, nines, or tens. So this is a really easy way. I call these my search baits. So when I'm looking for fish, I can almost always guarantee some follows or some movement from these smaller inlines right here. In conjunction with inlines, I like these slightly larger arm spinners. Um, this is the Lungeon Hybrid Nutbuster. It's a combination of flashaboo and silicone skirt, and I have this larger grub here. Again, love adding these kind of more realistic looking plastics to all of my spinner baits inlines to entice that fish to bite. Um, you can work these a variety of ways. They work great on the eight. You can pull these so effectively through grass where big musky are waiting to ambush prey. The lipless crankbait. Um, again, extremely effective shallow water search bait, um, especially on these southern reservoirs. What a better shad imitation that can get something's attention. They make the rattles in all different types of frequencies, um, different colors, different body styles, everything that you can kind of fine tune and throw and see what, what's going to make that fish tick. Two things on a lipless, make sure you don't oversize the leader. Um, I've seen those giant fluoro or, or steel leaders that can completely kill the action on this bait. And number two, always upsize the hooks. My rule is, if you can take a standard pair of pliers and bend these hooks, that ain't gonna work when you're musky fishing. Almost looks like we're bass fishing. The big chatterbait. Uh, there are a variety of these bigger chatterbaits offered in a musky size. This is actually a homemade lake fork special, but I've caught a lot of big musky on this thing. Um, the angry dragon's another offering. Again, there are several. 
um, for some reason, you'll ask a lot of your bass guys, and when they're fishing musky infested waters, and they're fishing uh, any type of bladed jig, they almost always have an unpleasant encounter with a musky. Little tip, though the jackhammer is one of the most effective springtime musky baits, I would never fish that $18 bait in musky infested waters. Um, I've lost one too many. So always upsize, rig it right, get the right leader, equip yourself for success when you're tangoing with these giant fish. Now for my all time favorite, the bait that has put more fish in my boat, nine fish alone last spring than any other bait that I have. The Lungeon 22 Short Musky Crankbait. Comes stock with 1X strong VMC hooks, so no need to upgrade the hooks here. This little thing right here is by far the most effective bait this time of year that I have ever used when you're targeting big spring musky. My baits have some love. Lungeon makes these in a variety of different colors. Um, last year they also came out with its bigger brother, the 22 long. However, again, when talking about spring musky, this is what you need. You want to fish it the exact same way as you're fishing a lot of your bass crankbaits or any other crankbaits by aggressively bumping it off of structure, timber, uh, large boulders, laydowns. Nine times out of ten, when I get bit on this bait, I am either bumping it along the bottom and allowing it to suspend, or I am aggressively running it into the sides of your laydowns, larger boulders, and that's what gets that fish's attention. You want to be as erratic and aggressive as this as you possibly can. Though you control these, I prefer to cast, especially on a kayak. Trolling isn't super easy, uh, nor is it effective for me. I really like to kind of scan my, the water I'm fishing and effectively pick it apart. This bait allows me to do that. Again, it's the perfect size, it's got the right hook, it's got a really tight wobble, and you can fish this thing however you want. But the most effective way to do so is to aggressively run this thing into whatever it is that you can. Any type of structure you can make contact with, that is what's gonna entice that fish to strike. While the Lungeon 22 Short may be my absolute favorite bait of all time, don't sleep on the Lungeon Chad Shad. Um, this is kind of one of those baits you don't see very often, but it is known for catching giant musky and pike, whether trolling or casting. It's got an extremely tight wobble and a really, really good action. Frank baits will always be one of my favorite ways to cover water in the spring. Now, just because I'm a big believer in downsizing my baits and, and kind of taking a slightly different approach to your traditional big bait musky fishing, that doesn't mean that I don't break out some of the tried and true musky tactics this time of year, especially the Poseidon and the Mid Medusa. If I'm going to throw a big bait this time of year, it's these two right here. The Medusa has been a long time favorite of mine, especially in the fall. However, this smaller size tends to also work really well on some of these larger reservoirs down south. Um, you can fish this along the bottom, you can sweep it, you can hop it, you can fish it with a steady retrieve, however you want. How I find this to be most effective is to kind of pop or sweep it, allowing these triple tails to kind of do the work for you. Poseidon, one of my all-time favorites. Big fish catcher in the winter, but also effective in the spring. One of the best actions in the tail of any of the soft baits that I've seen. Um, mimics a lot of these, these sucker fish and the main forage that they have down here in these big southern reservoirs. Uh, I like to fish this really slow. You, it has a really good wobble and an, again, an incredible lifelike action in the tail that these fish cannot resist. I mentioned earlier, a lot of times in the spring, uh, the term shallow water can be very relative. Um, we could be talking a couple feet or we could be talking 10, 15 feet. Depending on what the water temperature is, we know musky like warm water this time of year, and oftentimes the surface over deep water, that, that surface temperature will be a little higher, and those fish will suspend over deep water as they're moving back into their spawning pockets. That is a time where I like to break out the slowy. If you've got a fish that you've been working for a few hours and it doesn't seem to commit, every once in a while, you can throw out this very tempting buzzbait style topwater with a nice big twin tail grub plastic on it and entice a strike 
on top water, which is I think everybody can agree, having an upper 40s, low 50s fish blow up on top water has got to be probably the, one of the best things an angler can ever experience. So that kind of goes through my rundown of kind of what I'm looking for for spring muskie fishing, what baits I like to use, what tactics, where I start to, to look. Um, hopefully the next week or so, I'm gonna find myself in South Carolina near some musky waters. Um, I might be able to break away for a few hours and get after them. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to wait until May to chase my favorite fish on the planet. Thank you all so much for allowing me to talk some musky fishing with you. Um, since I can't be on the water, the second best thing is to talk about fishing, especially musky fishing. So that being said, make sure you have the proper gear when going after these fish. Large net, pliers, wire cutters. Uh, understand the, how important safe handling and a quick release is for these fish. Uh, thank you guys for watching and hopefully you all can get out there and put this stuff to the test and put your first muskie in the boat.